boy, more drag. What? <laughs> and on the day of the drag race Espana cast reveal out of nowhere that literally wasn't announced anywhere and just dropped. <laughs> Word. Anywho, welcome to the cup, the currently unnamed podcast where the tea is piping hot and you're always ready to spill. I'm Logan Murphy, just a gay, here with Starbucks, because, you know, it's one of those days. I'm Miss Baltimore Bombshell, and I need coffee right now. Except it's tea. I'm calling you it's out. Tea. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I see that tea bag tag, so. It still has caffeine. <laughs> And I am Brandon. Today I have boba because this was a good week. Kind of. Yes. Now what kind of boba did you get? I must know. So this is um, mango passion fruit tea. So I'm... Yes. I need that. I love that. The, um, the boba place we have nearby has a um, lemon lychee. Or no, oh. it's, a cum- it's a kumquat lemon. Kumquat lemon. And it's so good. But... We're not here to talk about Boba. We're here to talk about RuPaul's Rigged for Bag of Chips race, UK versus the World, episode three. Once oh, yeah. again, rigged for Bag of Chips, in my opinion. But we'll talk about it. <sighs> this episode was something. Yeah. It was something. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. 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 Anyway, we come back to the workroom. Shaz is gone. Oh, it's so sad now that she's left. I know. She's just like a ray of sunshine. It's not another day of being mediocre because Cheryl's not here. Oh, that's, it's sad. And now it it, it takes over from someone else now, unfortunately. We will indeed talk about the, the sadness. Um, we do find out that Jimbo chose to eliminate Juju B, <gasps> which I wasn't all that surprised by. I was. I was like, girl, you were asking for to get on and a al- lot like create an alliance with her, and then you go and do that. Like I was making all the same faces Juju B was when this was going down. Yeah, Not that was awesome. Cool Jimbo. Mm-hmm. I was also surprised, but I understand why Jimbo did it because absolutely. Yeah. So um, again, this bootless is just tragic in general. I I can't wait. I don't know what's going to happen in the next coming weeks, but we'll see. Nothing but good, probably. Hmm. <sighs> but yeah, so it then becomes Jimbo versus Jujubee as Jujubee does call out Jimbo for like trying to make an alliance. This is a different Jujube than we've seen really on any other season of Drag Race. She is like in the middle of everything, uh, in the middle of the drama, and all of that. And uh, it was an interesting uh, version of Jujube that we have yet to see on the show. I have a conspiracy theory. Mm-hmm. I am starting to think that Jujube was an alternate for this season. I don't know that to be sure. Um, the only person I know to be an alternate full T is Cheryl. So, um, I don't know if anybody else was an alternate, but I'm starting to think based on the drag that Jujubee has brought and based on the headspace that she's in, that maybe she wasn't an initial pick for this season. I don't know what y'all think, but that's kind of, that's kind of where I've landed at this point. Hmm. I mean, maybe the drag, but I feel like she would have had, she has stuff that's great that she would have brought. So I don't know. Do we know when this was filmed? This was filmed in March of 2021. Okay. So a while then. I believe it was right, either right before or right after Queen of the Universe. So I'm starting to think maybe it was right after. Because if she had just come off of, you know, doing horribly on Queen of the Universe and went straight into Drag Race, since she was already in London, like, part of me is starting to think that maybe they were just like, oh, someone 
another U.S. queen that maybe will have other involvements in drag franchises later this year wasn't able to do it. And since Jujubee's already in London, maybe mm -hmm. we just extend Jujubee a little bit longer to stay in London and then walk into the workroom of UK versus the world. That's a good theory. Um, yeah, possibly. It, if anyone has, yeah, yeah it's ahead. possible. So who, who knows? Yeah. And if anyone has information on Queen of the Universe filming, because I don't care enough, I'm going to be honest. I'm surprised it got renewed for a second season. Uh, we probably won't be covering it here. I'm going to be really honest. Because um, the first season was a disaster, in my opinion. Um, other than the talent and icons that are Ada Vox and R.A.B. Castine. Well, mind uh, you, it was only six episodes, and I think they're going to be a lot more for a sec for the second season, so... Either more episodes or less queens. Mm -hmm. uh, either one is fine with me, because, like, otherwise... Oh, and Lavoie. I can't forget Lavoie. Lavoie was good. Oh, yeah. But, um... We come back into the workroom the next day. Everybody's talking. Uh, Janie has her repeater badge. And then we get the discussion that we knew eventually was going to come. Maybe. Uh, and it is the Mo Hart discussion. She, uh, they are Mo Hart. Just Mo. And uh, I was happy to finally see this. Mm -hmm. We've been speculating for a while. So. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, Here we there. weren't sure if it was going to be during the season or after. Yeah. But um, I'm glad yeah. it would happen during during it because yes. um, I think it was likewise when when Trinity the Tuck was formerly Trinity Taylor and then for that for All Stars four so that's yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's good uh, like I I love it yeah and they they gave some more explanation on exactly why they're making this change and it all comes down to the fact that they just want to be a genderless entertainer which I think is fabulous. And I think it was truly on display in this episode specifically. Yes. Um, in the choices that they made, we'll talk about it. Um, but yes, Mo Heart, Mo Love, Baga makes a stupid joke, and Mo is just sitting there like, like not understanding, but also like, sure, girl, uh huh, yeah, uh huh. Um, but yes, RuPaul comes in. And we get the reading challenge. Yes. I was hoping we would get one. So I was happy to see it. I do wish they had done it episode two. So that way Shez could have been a part of it too. But mm -hmm. um, overall, I think this reading challenge was fine. <laughs> it was. We it was fine. That, yeah, we all knew GGB would be amazing. And we all kind of knew Baga would suck. So, oh yeah, the one the one that surprised me the most that didn't do well was Mo. Yeah, I was surprised. It was very uncomfortable to watch. Yeah, I I did like their um, bag of chips more like Job of the Hut. I thought that was funny ish. Um, I wrote down four that I particularly liked for reads. Um, I had Janie Tabaga. Um, I think you took the wrong stage door. They're filming Botched Next Door. That one was good. <laughs> that was really so, good. I think that might have been my favorite read. Um, so. mm -hmm. And then I had Jujubee to Pangina. Um, Rue was looking for the most famous drag queen in Thailand. Was she busy? <laughs> um, I thought that was good. Juju calling Baga Princess Di Aria. Also great. Um, and then Blues read to Juju B, more like Juju has been. That was pretty funny. I thought that was funny. I don't know if y'all yeah. had any others, but those were the ones that stood out to me. I kind of did like part of Pangina's reads. I think Pangina did really good. Pangina did good. Yeah, not, like not necessarily like um, I I thought that like wasn't outstanding, obviously, but f like I think I had a better, I had a more out laugh for Pangina, like out of all of them because of course we didn't know what she was gonna expect, so I was just like okay. Mm -hmm. Of course, Juju, I was just like we knew you're gonna be funny, so I was just like okay. So th that was like how I felt about it. Yeah. But yes, as as we know. Juju wins her third reading challenge again. 
<laughs> I was not surprised about that. this. <laughs> no, I, I, I would have just, I justify in my mind giving the win to Juju. I think a close second for me personally was Janie, because uh, Janie did win the reading challenge on Hall in season one, so I knew she was gonna, she was gonna be good. And then I think Pangina was probably a good third. Blue was up there as well, but mm-hmm. very mm-hmm. happy for Juju B. She's finally here. Um, and we go into the maxi challenge for the week, which is the West End Wendy's Rusical question mark. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, I it would, was very Rusical. That's I would call it a Rusical, but it was very different from any other Rusical we've ever seen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they are playing has been um like theater stars. And Liza Minnelli, but the role wasn't even really Liza Minnelli. We'll talk about that role because confusion. Yeah. Um, so Jujubee for winning the mini challenge gets to decide the roles. And everyone pretty much gets the role that they want, except for Baga. Because she wants this Lally Bowles role, which is they talk about being inspired by Liza Minnelli. I got it as, um, oh, what's her face? That um, Sally Bowles from Cabaret. Yeah. So I was like, why are we making the Liza comparison and not the Cabaret comparison? I was a little confused. Yeah. Um, that too. Because, I mean, the Sally part is like, kind of derived a little bit from Liza from what I remember of Cabaret the last time I saw Cabaret was years ago but um it seemed like I I, they were hyper fixating on this Liza thing and obviously Baga is kind of known for doing Liza though I don't think she does a great Liza I'm gonna be really honest I think it's fine but I don't think it's groundbreaking by any means um, and so she ends up getting the, uh, Tracy Turnblatt inspired role, which she is just complaining left, right, center, up, down, uh, up, up, down, down, BA, smash, boom, all the things. Like she is just complaining about everything. <sighs> this season would be so much better without bag of chips. And I know Honestly. I'm a broken record at this point, but like. I mean, like I like I said, I liked her on her season and everything. I, I had previously really enjoyed her, but honestly, it's I am very much over the the dramatics. Yeah, it's just it's too much, and yeah, but yeah, yeah, Baga was fine in in her original season, but now yeah. like. Why is she like acting this way? Like not getting what she wants? Like because she's the most famous woman in Britain, Brandon. That's why. It's it's giving very. Um, a it's lot. giving spoiled brat. Yeah, spoiled brat, egotistic, um, all, all that. <sighs> so we go into rehearsals. I don't really have a whole lot in rehearsals, other than I will say. And I have it, you can't can't really see it on my water bottle anymore because it's covered by a few other things. But you can see right there that little bit tries to do a cartwheel because Mo Hart does a cartwheel. And I stood up and screamed (laughs) while I was watching. She did a cartwheel. She couldn't do it in the damn performance. We'll talk about it. But she did a cartwheel and I was so proud. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um we also see um so it's choreographed by um i believe his name was johannes he's a strictly come dancing person which i don't think is the first time they've had a strictly come dancing professional as a choreographer mm-hmm. um the mm-hmm. only other one i remember was for the dragaton challenge on uk3 but he was lovely and wonderful and i hope they bring him back um, I think they had Curtis from Love Island. Was it Curtis from Love Island one time? One time. From Love Island. From yeah. Love Island. I don't. Yeah, there was that. a guy on Love Island that I'm pretty sure was one of the choreographers. Wow. 
They haven't had a consistent one, so I don't no. necessarily I'm gonna, remember. I'm gonna double check. I'm yeah, sure. of course, of course, I was not familiar with him because obviously UK. Yeah, but um, he did pretty good. Like um, like giving the advice that I was just like not expecting at all because like how everyone else who choreographs always like. I, I can never tell sometimes because yeah. it's like dancing's not my expertise. So it's just like, yeah. Mm. Yes. Curtis Pritchard and his brother were one of the choreographers on, on uh, Drag Race season, UK. Season one. Was it in season one? I think so. But he was yeah. on Love Island. Oh. I haven't watched a whole lot of Love Island UK. Um, I've watched like the early seasons, but I don't think I've watched his season. Um, oh, and then Jimbo has a neck issue. Now, do we think this was a real neck issue, or do we think Jimbo just didn't want to dance? Probably I mean, didn't want to dance. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. It seems, I mean, look, I'm also older, and sometimes you get those pains that just sort of show up, and then they go away. But... Yeah. Well, and she's not even that old. That's the thing. I know. I'm trying to look up. I mean, I get it if you can if you sleep funny because that that's happened to me a lot before. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But um, if it's like being brought up like it's kind of serious, I'm like, this doesn't seem something. Oh, right. just kidding. Oh. Um, Jimbo is your age, Jay. Yeah. Told you, Jimbo's old. I thought Jimbo was like mid thirties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyway. Um, well, because we all know what happened with Jimbo on Canada season one in that godforsaken song and dance challenge <laughs> um, where no one did well except for Lemon and Priyanka. Um, so. I'm in the middle of the rewatch right now and I'm like about to approach oh, that episode. I'm oh, like, good. oh, here we go. I'm so sorry for your loss. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's a lovely, lovely, lovely issue. But um, nothing else really happens. So I guess we can talk about the performance and the runway. Yeah. Um, the guest judge for the week is Jonathan Bailey, who I realized days after watching the episode for the first time, that I had first followed on Instagram a few months ago and didn't remember who he was until Pangina and Janie had their, like, lo fight for his love on social media. I don't know if y'all saw that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Pangina oh, and wait. Janie have been, like... Yeah, I Pangina and Janie have been going back and forth trying to, like, get his attention. <laughs> Because I saw, obviously, I like, saw Pangina's, so I, I didn't see Janie's though, even though I do. Janie follow responded her. with, like, um, oh god, I don't even remember what it was. It was funny though, um, but yeah, and that's when I saw his Instagram handle, and I was like, because it's Jay Bayleaf, Brandon will know the reference, yeah, and I was like, oh, yes, good, um, it's a Pokemon reference, Jay, okay, yeah, <laughs> I was like, Brandon will know. Um, <laughs> keep, keep my chikorita plush back here. I I have one somewhere. It's <laughs> somewhere in my room. Um, but yes, let's dive into. I guess we could talk about the performance and the runway together. Mm -hmm. okay. I put the looks together, so Perfect. might as well. So slideshow, but make it pink. Um. So yes, we'll talk about the challenge performance, and then the category on the runway is dot dot dot. And first up, starting strong, Pangina Heels opening the show as Whittle Orphan Fanny. I did not know that was her. No. I'm starting to think, though, is this where um, Rue got his uh, nickname for Willow Pill? Maybe. Uh oh. I hope not. I yeah. hope not either, but Pangina slayed this episode again. She did so good. Everything was so... I, it was funny because I remember watching the show and going, who the hell is supposed to be Fanny? And then <laughs> somebody like in one of the confessionals was like, oh, like Pan, Pangina did amazing. And I was like, oh my God, what? <laughs> How is she so beautiful? How did she look so ugly? 
The power of makeup. Yeah, right. the power of makeup. Like, I was looking at this, I was just like, is that supposed to be Pangina? And then, of mm-hmm. course, like, like I can see it now, but when she first came out, I was like, I did not even see it. Yeah, I didn't see it at all. Yeah. But no, I think she did an incredible job. Um, this was definitely one of the harder roles, I would say. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think she stepped up and did an incredible job with this, like, creepy, gross... Or, or orphan grown up character. Yeah. Um. I was grossed out and yet it intrigued the entire time. Uh, um. And exactly. then this this runway is easily one of the best things I've ever seen on Drag Race. Oh yeah, that runway is incredible. It's so good. Uh, just like Pangina's runways have been just phenomenal. If Pangina doesn't win the season, I don't want it. Is kind of where I'm at at this point. Like, I love so many of the other queens, but, like, if Pangina doesn't win the season, I don't want it. Yeah, I have to agree with you. I I mean, she's just leaps and bounds ahead of... She's consistent, too. So, yeah, I, I mean, she's... I've said it, I think, since the first week, but she's been my number one. So... She's... She's never fallen in three episodes. She has not fallen below high. Yeah. Which is remarkable. So uh, I wish we could talk about her all day, but we can't. Oh, 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 not my light going out. Okay, that's better. Hi, I'm bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Who it's hates fine. you? Um, My lamp. I don't know if I can get it in. Nope, I can't get it in frame. But yeah, my lamp hates me. And also the outlets in uh, in, in the bedroom hate me. So it's fine. Oh, bag of shit. I didn't think, I mean, I got her runway lock, what she was going for. Um, it was, there's something about like the hair looked a little bit mousy. Um, yeah. And... It's, I mean, I knew what she was going for, so that was good. Her performance wasn't bad. It was, it, you definitely saw like a few of the close ups where she was just over it and not wanting to be doing this. Um, so that kind of threw it off, but yeah, yeah, she, she actually sold it. I will say that, yeah. But the fact that she didn't want this role, but had to, like, suck it yeah. up, like, she tried to, like, do her best. And I honestly think she did good, but then again, like, it really come came down to what her attitude was overall right. and yeah. for me. See, I'm going to disagree a little bit, and it's not just because I don't like her. For me, there were two glaring problems with the performance. The first being the fact that the bangs on that wig literally covered her eyes Mm -hmm. and so you couldn't see her eyes for most of the performance and then on top of that what you did see was just her like dead in the face yeah it's like from far away at least when she first came out on stage she was selling the performance to me but then but there was a few close-ups where you just saw like blank and i was like oh okay Mm -hmm. I can also understand that like the judges are seeing this from a distance as well and from a distance she's selling it right it's just when you look at her close up there's nothing um and she got the choreo though I mean she did a good job with that so she didn't fail in that regard Mm -hmm. so yeah Yeah, for me it was like I I liked it but I also didn't like it so that was like yeah both yeah, and the runway, I think, is, like, perfectly acceptable for a first season of Drag Race, but for an All-Stars, it just feels, like, basic. And I hate this, like, wet hair under the hat kind of thing that she's going for. It just doesn't... It's just no. Like, I would have loved to see, like, fluffy pink curls or something. Um, anything other than this wig. I'm yeah, gonna be honest. anything else, else. So big at that point, like just keep with the big. Anything small looks out of it, just looks off. Or maybe even like no wig. This is a look where you could get away with not wearing a wig. And I don't think it would have been necessarily horrible. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's not the character she's going for, so I understand. But right. Yeah. yeah. Juju B is up next as Lally Bowels. And I actually thought Juju did a pretty good job. Same. I agree. It, it, they were harping on these Liza-isms, but again, this character is not inspired directly by Liza Minnelli. This is inspired by Sally from Cabaret. But I wonder if what they were doing is in the in in the um what we didn't see maybe is the script actually said had the character description and actually said this is eliza you know sure but then why isn't it also like if Janie's gonna be meryl streep no change in the name then why wasn't this like eliza Schmanelli. I don't fucking know. But like do a play on Liza Manelli's name then instead of doing a play on Sally Bowles. That's like, just yeah. But do the rusicals ever actually make any sense? No, <laughs> and so it's just I don't know. I'm I'm frustrated with this because I don't think I'm just gonna say it, I don't think Juju B should have been in the bottom. Agreed. Same. Um because I actually think her performance was pretty good. This look it's not horrible. It's different for Jujubee. The wig is not good. But I don't think this look is all horrible. I, you know, it's funny. Like, I didn't like it when it immediately came out on stage. And I was like, what in the world is she doing? But then the more I looked at it, the more I liked it. Um, or the more I, the, the less, like, bleh. I was about it. Um, but again, like it wasn't my favorite look, but I didn't think it was like terrible, terrible. Plus, I really liked the little, the different color uh, nails on her gloves mm -hmm. to go with the little sneaky yeah. thing. Well, my first attention with the runway, I was like, those heels, who I would never walk mm -hmm. in those. Nope. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> And neither I mean, I has could... Jujube, which I appreciate seeing something different. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could try if I wanted to, but I would like break my ankle immediately. Oh, absolutely same. same. But yeah, I thought Jujube, like, I thought she did pretty good too. Like, I thought at least she would get safe. I thought she was solidly safe. Same. Like, maybe bottom three, but like solidly safe. Mm -hmm. so, I don't know. I don't know what they're trying to do with Juju anymore, but <sighs> next up, Blue Hydrangea as Mariah. What is it? Mariah Gone Trappy? Something like that. I don't like know. That. It was a play on uh, The Sound of Music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She did good in the performance. She did really well. And her runway was so bizarre and strange. It was good too. So. I liked. Logan, how many times have we seen this color combo? <laughs> God help us. Like, well, normally it's for design challenges. And, you know, I am a fan of Auburn football and Auburn University in general, and the colors are blue and orange. So I don't get too upset at blue and orange, but, um, and this was filmed before season 14. So... Mm -hmm. I don't know. I was honestly surprised the blue wasn't in the top three. Like, I think oh, yeah. the, the winners were very obvious. But for me, like, I would have put blue in the top. And I'm I'm uh, once again confused as to why she's not in the top. Yeah, I thought her performance would have pushed her into the top, to be honest. Yeah, I thought so, too. Because I was just like, the, I love the performance. And this runway was, like, Incredible. phenomenal. I was just like... Mm -hmm. Okay. Like the heads like, I was a, sold it for me. Yeah. It was yeah. so interesting. I was about to say mm -hmm. I was about to say she hasn't worn anything bad on the runway, but then I think back to week one and I was like, oh never mind, I can't say that. <laughs> um most of what she's worn on the runway has been phenomenal. Um, I think honestly the reason she wasn't in the top is because she picked this character because this is so reminiscent to her Mary Berry. 
in the same sort of vein. And if you, I, because I watched the performance back again today to like make sure that my feelings were still the same way. And in the performance, you see Graham having a great time. You see Jonathan Bailey having a great time. But Rue and Michelle are kind of like. Yeah. The whole time. And I think it's because she's put herself in this like horny older woman character again. Got it. Yeah. Which I think she excels in. And I think she did a great job. But I think that's why she was safe rather than in the top. Right. But I disagree with that. Same. I I third that. Great. Mo Hart as Spankin Spurter, which I thought was stupid. I thought the first 75% of this performance was going to be a winning performance from Mo Hart. I will agree with you on that. She came out and she was selling it, and I was like, yes, this is she's doing great. And then it sort of fizzled. And again. then she didn't land the cartwheel again. I thought that was on purpose. I also did until I saw her face and I was like, oh no, that was an accident. <laughs> but yeah, it took all the words out of my mouth for that. Like, I thought she did well. And then that part, and I was just like, no. Yeah. I personally still would have put her safe based mostly on the fact that this is the best look of the night on the runway. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I love Mo. I don't know if I like this outfit. Oh, so, um, it, the corset was off to me. It felt like it was sitting up too high. Like the hip things were coming out weird. The the legs felt disjointed from the hips. And then like the breasts were way like up on her neck. And that was like Is oh, this not where breasts are supposed to be, Jay? No, honey. Mine are down at my knees. At my oh, good. Okay. Yeah. But like I got the character. It was really clever. Mm -hmm. It is something about the fit was really off for me, but um, she looked great. I think walking, I didn't necessarily have an issue. I have an issue with it in this photo. Yeah, same. But I think walking, it sits a little bit lower because mm. um, it adjusted ever so slightly on her body. Yeah. So I, I, I'll agree with everything you said, but I still think it was the best. Her and Pangina are like right there for me. Yeah, yeah. Pandora for me was it was the clear winner on this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm looking at this like, and Jay, you're right. Like that mm -hmm. that course, it could have been much like designed like much lower for me. And I probably like I wish the course it was also polka dot mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> but I do like the Monsters Inc. reference, and it, mm -hmm. I didn't even realize the the eye like she yep. was holding so i was just like oh wait mm -hmm. i didn't even notice that when she was walking yeah so when they were walking so i was just like okay i love it though uh mo heart mo episodes with mo which i'm happy mm -hmm. about so janie jk as meryl streep just meryl streep i forgot about her performance <gasps> Oh, and I man. love Janie. I think she's so wonderful, but I kind of forgot about her performance. I think it was because it was just Meryl Streep and not like a character. Um, but she did really good. Not I'm Carol kind of, Streep. Yeah, she she did she did good. She looked great. Um, her polka dots. I actually didn't hate. I don't like the feathers mm -hmm. on the the brim of her hat um and maybe if the dots there were more dots on her dress possibly but i didn't hate it i thought she looked really great mm -hmm. that's all that's yeah i if the challenge is impersonate the celebrity slash character slash theater person that you're supposed to be emulating then I think Janie won um, because her Meryl Streep impersonation is fabulous. Mm -hmm. 
if this is based on the rusical of it all, if this if that's what this is, I think she did good. Um, I'm a little conflicted between her and Blue as far as who should have been in the other top spot. Um, because I think Janie did better in the challenge than Blue, but I think Blue did better on the runway. Yeah. I do like this runway look as well. I don't understand what Graham was saying about the lower half. I, I, I The pencil skirt is what you have an issue with, sir? I'm confused. Um, <laughs> yeah, I because, don't that either. Because I actually really like this. This is a great shape, a great length for Janie. Um, I didn't necessarily love the hair. Really? I like the dark hair on her. The I like the I like the dark hair. It just it was a little too flat for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. If the dots had like more presence, because like I do like the white detail. I just wish like there was more presence of the white. Because like of course the black and yellow works well, because mm -hmm. we know that. But I wish the white was like shown more, in my opinion. Or even add like a third color of dot. I don't know. Like like, what would you add, though? That's the question. Maybe, like, a blue. Like, a light blue. Now, that would clash. Mm. I disagree. I don't know, because there's a little bit of, like... It, I think there's a little bit of, like, blue accent on the hat. Or is that black? It's black. Okay. Like, I, I don't know. I know, where, I know where you're getting from, because, like, my school yeah. colors were... Um, blue and gold like this oh yeah mine mine were basically my entire uh elementary to high school it was mm -hmm. always blue and yellow <laughs> like i get it like um just personally for me like um if it were a color change like all the black would be blue instead like that would be sure. my that would be my thing yeah like, I, again like there's like one part of like the dress where it's like you see like a whole like space of yellow that could be like more more dots mm -hmm. could be put in there because like yeah. that's again that's just me. Yeah, but I thought Janie did good. Mm -hmm. So, last up, oh boy, we got to talk about Jimbo. This performance was not good, in my opinion. I didn't think it was bad. I don't know. Okay. I I think it was. I'm. I will say. Like, full disclosure, I'm never really a fan of the Rusicals just because they're all kind of cringy in some way. So it's hard for yeah. me to just look at that and go, oh, that was really good. Or, oh, that was really bad because I'm always just like, oh, this is so uncomfortable to watch. But, yeah, that's all. Okay. I was going to say that she tried, I'll say. Yeah. But yeah, this wasn't my favorite performance, obviously. Yeah, no, I, I'm i upset that they critiqued her on something that was choreographed. Because she did talk in interviews about how the choreographer told her to keep the basket in front of her face for that long. And so in that regard, I'm like, why wasn't the choreographer the guest judge? Right. Oh, because yeah. I think if the choreographer had been the guest judge, I think they would have been a little bit more lenient on Jimbo, and maybe they wouldn't have thrown her in the bottom. Um, for me, though, I do think this was the not the worst performance, but the least engaging performance. And it's also really difficult when you pick a dog as your character. Um because there's like there were a few characters that really didn't have like you didn't have like a set in stone sort of like way to interpret them this was one of them and i thought the the annie character in a lot of ways was another character like that um mm -hmm. but i don't know i i don't think the the performance was all that great but i think the runway is phenomenal mm -hmm. oh yeah this runway is great <sighs> so yeah, that's that's all. We did yeah. it. I, I will say, I think Pangina had my favorite runway, but um, Jimbo was actually my second. I loved that dress. I thought it was really good. I think Pangina was my favorite. I think I'm going to put Mo in my second. Mm. 
yeah, obviously Pangen is my favorite. Um, I'm not sure who my second would be, if I'll be honest. Oh, Blue. I'm, yeah, Blue. I was going to say, like, Blue did well. Um, a bunch of people did well on the runway in this challenge. But we get the critiques. We find out that Baga and Blue are safe yet again. I didn't understand that yet again. I, I really don't get it. But we have a top two of Pangina Heels and Janie Jacquet with Mo Hart low and a bottom two of Jimbo and Juju B. Yeah. I was kind of shocked by this. Same. I was too. Yeah. I was too. Yeah, I think for me, I would have... I think my bottom two would have been Jimbo and Baga. For me personally. Um, just as having the two least engaging performances. And then I would have put Blue in the top and had um, Mo and Juju be safe. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree. Yeah. <sighs> so we... We go to the the untucked ish, this like the deliberation mm -hmm. section, um, mm -hmm. and Baga finally realizes that she's been a dickhead because everyone then calls her out and tries to make her aware of the fact that she's been a dickhead and not taking this seriously. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciated Pangina specifically just being like, "This is what it is. This is how you've been acting." And then I think it was Janie that came in and was like, we're not trying to beat you up here. We're just trying to make you aware of this because we're a team here and you're bringing down the team. Which is an interesting way of thinking about an All-Stars. I've never really considered an All-Stars as like a team necessarily. Yeah. In this challenge specifically, I guess they're all working together in the, in the performance. So I can understand that. But... Um, Baga is like, yeah, I've kind of been, you know, not a dickhead, but basically a dickhead. Um, and I'm glad that she finally realized what's happening, but... Time will tell. Yeah, well, that's sick, because I don't, I don't um, know. <sighs> yeah, I, I don't know if I know if it will stick. Yeah, at this point right here, I really felt bad for Jujubee here, because, like, she like she really thought she did well and i think a, some of the girls agreed because i was yeah like the fact that she was bottom like of course i was shocking because i was just like yeah uh, i mean you saw her heart just break like everything just crashed in her face yeah when for they me, that. for me when she's backstage and she's like i thought i had done well this week and it's yeah. just like i uh, i don't understand why they are prioritizing Baga over Jujubee at this point. Like, it really just does not make sense. Good TV for the UK, I guess? I've seen, like, most of the UK reception I've seen isn't even liking Baga on this season. <laughs> um, I don't know. It, it's a confusing narrative pick that I don't think I would have done, and I don't think most people would have done. Um, but regardless, they deliberate. Not much really happens, because they're just talking. Um, and uh, we have a lip sync, and this was a good time. <laughs> so they lip sync to We Like to Party, The Vanga Bus by The Vanga Boys, and I saw somewhere online that was saying um, that there's now a thought that maybe there's, like, one song of, like, of the five lip syncs we're going to get, there's one song from each country. Because oh. Had, because this is a Dutch group. And then I guess RuPaul is the American representative. Um, and then we had Spice Girls to start the season. So... Are we getting a Canadian artist and are we getting a Thai artist is really the question at this point. I mean, I, I, I like that theory, but I don't know what Thai like, song they would do. 
I really have no clue. Mm-hmm. Like that's what I was thinking, but I loved this lip sync. It was so good. It was, it was so fun. Good. Like, uh, w- I, like this song, I didn't even think that they were gonna choose this because, like, Americans know this song because of the Six Flags commercials we always see when we were uh-huh. young. Uh huh. Yep. And like, when I heard it, I was just like, "Wait a damn minute!" Mm-hmm. Like, I had to go back to like the music, the first music video, which which, which was them, and then mm-hmm. of course I went to the Six Flags commercial, and I was just like, "Oh my goodness!" Literally, <laughs> like it just brought me from a blast from the past, and I was like so happy. And I've been listening to that song like all week because of it. <laughs> yeah it's been stuck in my head the whole time i thought janie did a good job uh i think janie threw the lip sync though i'm gonna be honest yes agreed like she did a perfectly serviceable job but pangina was going pangina was at 100 and i think janie was at like 65 I yeah. agree. Yeah. yeah. Like, um, Pangina serve like that. The, like the leg choreography was it also hair care choreography yeah. she did too? Yeah, she she added in like the whacking all that. Waffles, it's agree. my... Waffles agrees. Good. Good as he should. And there was like one point I saw this on Twitter. Both of them did like the same move. Oh yeah, it was the same like part of a. a, a it was like the same four count. Mm-hmm. From was... the actual like music video, and I was like, "This is fun." Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was like, "I'd again." This was like one of my favorite lip syncs ever. Like, not not like like performance wise, but like best song choice. Really? Mm-hmm. Like, I thought this was like a terrible song choice, but also I hated this song when it came out years and years ago because I was in middle school when this song came out. Uh, <laughs> no, because like I have a I'm thing. Yep, sorry. I have a thing where, like, I ha- I categorize, like, I think it's three for, like, I think best lip sync in general, best lip sync mm-hmm. choice, mm-hmm. and then, I guess, best, like, lip sync showdown. Mm. Sure. Like, that's what I have. That's how I feel it as. Okay. It's like, sure. No, I think it, it was an interesting choice. I liked what ended up happening. Um... So I guess I'm just right in the middle of y'all. <laughs> it's kind of where I'm at, but... I get it, I get it. <laughs> Pangina wins the lip sync. And she says that she's going off of performance in this challenge. And we say goodbye to Jimbo. I mean, she's not wrong. If you look at the no. two performances Jimbo was the weaker but I think I don't think anybody would be I mean we'll find out next episode but I don't think anybody would be like completely upset or surprised considering that Jimbo kind of threw Juju under the bus last week with like supposedly you know Alliance so what how else was Jimbo going to play this yeah what? Yeah, it, it felt like a setup at this point to where, like, the start of the episode, I was kind of like, well, if Jimbo's in the bottom, Jimbo's going home. Um, I personally think Janie also chose Jimbo. I don't know that to be sure yet. I but think so. based on the fact that uh, Jimbo would have sent Janie home first instead of uh, Lemon... I think this was Janie's opportunity as well, but she didn't want to get the blood on her hands of sending home RuPaul's favorite. Mm-hmm. So I I think I would have almost appreciated it more. And I don't know if this was Pangina's MO, but if she had just been like, yeah, I'm sending Jimbo home because she's my biggest threat. She's already been in the top twice. And literally the only other people that have been in the top are myself and Janie. I'm going to send home my biggest competition so I can make it further in the game. And I don't know that to be Pangina's MO, but if it is, I almost wish she had said that. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, it might be brought up um, in the beginning of next episode on Tuesday, so we'll see. I'm hoping so, because I'm, I'm, I'm curious. But Waffles, what do you think? Waffles? 
Thoughts? Yes. He agrees. Great. Wonderful. Well, that's all. We it made was it. A perfectly serviceable episode of UK versus the world. Uh, I must, I would be remiss to point out that next week is Snatch Game. Yay. Finally. It's happening. I was waiting for this. I'm not thrilled, and the only reason why is because I'm pretty sure they're just going to set up Baga getting a win. Which I'm kind of afraid about. Awful. But, um, of course, yeah. I love Snatch Game. Um, I thought this was going to be either the fir first or second challenge, if I was going to be honest, to, like, showcase Imagine everyone. they walk into Drag Race. Episode mm -hmm. 1, Snatch Game. I would have... That like, would be so fierce, honestly. I would have loved that. I think they learned from uh, All Stars 2 and also Down Under Season 1 not to do Snatch Game episode, like, 1 or 2. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know any of the characters that happen, but we do know that one of the contestants is Kay Price! The Pricey is in the building, and I have a soft spot for Katie Price, mostly because of her season of Celebrity Big Brother UK that Michelle Visage was on, and also a lot of people that we don't like, but mostly Michelle Visage was on it, um, and she ended up winning. So I love Katie Price. I'm very excited to see Katie Price. It'll be like a mini, it'll be a re mini reunion for her and yeah, because I I think Michelle is the other contestant, mm. probably, probably, probably. I would imagine, so, girl. Yeah, but and it'll be snatch game at six, which is interesting because the last time we had snatch game at six was All Star Six with the snatch game of, of Love, mm. which which makes so sense. I, which so yeah, mm -hmm. so. We shall see what happens, but until then, we'll be back next week to discuss the Snatch Game of UK versus the World. Uh, make sure to follow us on all of the things. Hit all of the buttons down below, except for the dislike. Um, unless you didn't like it, and then if in that case, don't like the video. You don't have to, but it would be appreciated. Um, follow Jay and Brandon, because they're beautiful and amazing. Um, Follow you because you're beautiful and amazing. I try my best. And with that, cheers to you all. Goodbye. Cheers. 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 Goodbye. Bye now. Goodbye. Bye-bye. So long farewell. Bye-bye.